we're going to do the Swern oxidation, which allows you to convert a primary alcohol or a secondary alcohol to an aldehyde or a ketone. This is a two-step process, and the conditions on the arrow are rather complicated to remember, but you are going to start out with a molecule called DMSO, and you're going to use a particular acyl chloride. Usually you use a solvent that is not acidic or basic. Um, dimethyl dichloromethane is a good choice and you keep it cold. After that step has been completed, what you typically use is a tertiary amine. The most commonly used is triethyl amine. These are the conditions you're going to be looking for. So initially, the DMSO and the acyl chloride are going to react with each other, and they are going to produce a new complex. So this is the part that's important, is what they produced. You don't need to worry about how it gets here, just that this is what's in solution, and this is the business end. Okay. And then you have your alcohol. What's going to happen is that this oxygen acts as a nucleophile towards the sulfur because the sulfur is electropositive. Now, as that happens, it kind of reacts sort of like a carbonyl compound. You don't have a pi bond, though, but you do break your weakest bond, which is the sulfur chlorine bond. It's the most polarized, and so chlorine is a good leaving group, and it will take off. As this has occurred, you're going to get a new complex. The weird thing about this particular complex is you've got two positive charges right next to each other, so it really would like to get rid of the proton. And chlorine is going to do that. Normally you don't produce a strong acid in the solution, but this is very bad to have the two positive charges next to each other, so chlorine will come in and, and take care of that proton. I'm just drawing out one of these methyl groups for a little later. This is where you get, after the first step of the reaction, it has nowhere else to go. And so it won't go anywhere else. It's at this point that we add the second set of conditions. This is where you add the triethyl amine. And its purpose is twofold. One of the purposes of the triethyl amine is to neutralize the acid that was formed. Oops, I did not draw that very well. So some of this base is going to neutralize this acid. You don't need to worry about any HCl in solution. As you hopefully remember, amines are weak bases. They are not strong bases. But we are going to take a proton from one of the methyl groups attached to the sulfur. Now, normally you don't do this, but it's what happens as a result of this that makes this such a favorable process. So carbon is going to get those electrons. And it's going to form something called a yield with that. A yield is going to result basically in a neutral compound, but you actually do have formal charges right next to each other. That's what a yield is, and they tend to form quite often in organic chemistry. And yields do stabilize themselves because overall they are charge neutral. That's why this was okay to do and take that proton away is because this sulfur is still positively charged. So overall, this complex is neutral. That's why taking that proton was an okay thing to do. Normally, I know you would not do that. But you could in this case. Oh, I did it again.
make that bond a little longer, sorry. That's a bond. So this is the yolid complex that you have, and you've also got your protonated amine. So this is now where we are. And it is at this point that this yolid rearranges with itself. I mean, you've got a carbon there with a negative charge. It's a yolid. It is charge neutral, but it would still like to stabilize itself to some degree. So this negatively charged carbon will come in here and remove one of the protons on the carbons adjacent to the oxygen. As that occurs, the pair of electrons in this carbon-hydrogen bond are given to the carbon and used to make a carbon-oxygen double bond. And as that happens, the sulfur that's wanted electrons this whole time gets the electrons from the sulfur-oxygen bond. Normally that wouldn't happen, but the sulfur does have a positive charge and it's the one that needs electrons. And oxygen is gaining electrons. It doesn't want 10, so it's willing to let those go. Now, after all is said and done, what do you get? Well, you get dimethyl sulfide, which is a lot more stable. And in this case, we get an aldehyde, because this was a primary alcohol that we started with. If you started with a secondary, you would have gotten a ketone, and tertiary again wouldn't have gone at all. So these are the species we get, and now we're stable.